At this point in the build, I'm going to install the drive motor and shafts. So I'll typically wait until most of the structural work of the build is done because with the motors, uh, you don't want to be doing a lot of grinding in the hull or, or cutting in the hull with the motors installed because you'll get um, dust and grit and stuff inside of them. First thing I'll usually do is um, install the props to the shaft. I'll show a few different ways. Uh, this one uses actually uses two set screws. You can uh, see them there with the flat spot on the shaft. This one here is actually uh, brazed on because this is a solid brass prop. Uh, it's brazed on because that's kind of a more solid um, attachment mechanism. I have a friend who has a uh, acetylene torch and we'll do it there. I've had pretty good luck with the props brazed on. So another thing you'll have to do is uh, grind flat spots for whatever the coupling is on the shaft. So you can see the, uh, the spot there. Just do that with a cutoff wheel and a Dremel. One thing you want to make sure is that the, the profile is relatively uniform. It's not slanted one way or the other because if it's slanted, when you go to tighten down uh, the collar or the, the gear or whatever, it'll, um, it'll slip one way or the other. So for this boat, I'm powering all three shafts, which is uh, pretty odd. But the first thing I'm going to do, because I have, you know, now that I have the shafts cut to length and the props attached and the flat spots, is to put grease in the stuffing tubes. So I'll use um, a heavy-duty marine grease. It looks like that. And what I'll use is um, this little uh, tube, and I'll use the, the popsicle stick to kind of fill the tube up and then use that to kind of squirt squirt it into the tubes because this stuff is so thick it's pretty hard to get in if you're not using some sort of motive force so once that's done I will uh, slide the shafts in fill the stuffing tubes with grease uh, other lubricants that are com commonly used uh, include silicone grease that's used I don't know pretty much any any sort of standard lubricant it's to keep the bushings in the shaft lubricated so they don't wear as much. Uh, it also helps limit the amount of water that leaks through the uh, the shafts. Well, that's pretty pretty minor. Okay, so now I'm gonna hook up the outboard motors. So what I'm using there is a flex collet coupling. So it's got two set screws on one end and just kind of a compression thing on the other end. I'm also gonna use this. Uh, shaft collar for the 316 shaft that will go on the uh, the flat spot there and what that does is help hold the shaft in the boat because uh, when you think about when the boat's going in reverse it wants to pull the shafts out of the boat um, or another way to look at it is the props are pulling the whole boat along um, really just by that collar. I have the first shaft lined up ready to go. For the, well for pretty much any fastener I try to use uh, stainless steel set screws. Every time I assemble or reassemble a shaft coupling I'll, I'll usually use a new set screw because they uh, they round off pretty easy. Um, this little uh, screwdriver thing I got from McMaster. Uh, I've been very happy with it. The the tip is is pretty good at, at holding the set screws. For the shaft collet coupler, um, it came with M4 set screws, and unfortunately I don't have any of those in stainless steel, so I'll just use the ones that are existing. But if you use you know the basic ones, they will they will rust over time and they can be hard to remove. And then for any fastener that goes on the shaft you want to use Loctite uh, blue Loctite specifically because that's removable. If you use red you'll probably need to apply some heat to remove it which is possible but I've always regretted it the times I've used red on uh, certain connections. So what I'll do is I got the uh, you know the set's ready to go, I'll just put a drop of Loctite on it. I've got the the shaft lined up so I can see the flat spot and I'll do the the collar first. I'll get that on 
and then I will uh, rotate the shaft to line it up to get the uh, shaft collet coupler on the motor done for done next and then once both those are done I will uh, torque down the um, this connection here I've got the first set screw in on the collar there so once you get it set you'll want to uh, rotate the shaft to make sure there's not too much friction um, this is a connection that over time the collar will probably slip a little bit uh, so it'll have to be retightened periodically you just want to be careful because especially if the uh, flat spot isn't level on the shaft when you tighten it down it might put too much compression on the uh, stuffing tube and it'll be hard to rotate so then you'll have to redo it. We've got the motor shaft flat spot lined up with the coupler so I'll put those screws in so I'd like to point out you know how important it is to have good access to these fasteners so you see here there's plenty of room for me to get in there um, if I had a, a cross member or something right here it would be a lot more complicated Get that one in, so I'll just torque it down a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy because um, you definitely don't want to round off the set screw. So now I'll just uh, I'll wipe away the excess Loctite and I'll uh, get the other one done. I have the coupler made up and uh, torqued down. So once I kind of check it, free to rotate, I'll uh, I'll spin the motor up just to make sure it doesn't sound uh, too crazy. So that's certainly not the uh, most quiet drivetrain that exists, but. Um, I think it'll be fine, it'll kind of wear in a bit. So I'm going to install the uh, the gear and the collar on the main shaft. So this, uh, this gear is from a place called Stock Drive Products. They make kind of precision industrial equipment. So it's got the 3 16 inch shaft bore and it's uh, 32 pitch. This is actually a gear I had from a different project that uh, I ended up taking apart. So. You can see there, I, I had to bore out the bottom of the gearbox a little bit to make it fit. But to get this on, um, I'll put the collar on and kind of line it up. And then I might actually need to use a hammer to uh, to get the shaft to align. Uh, this one uses a 440 set screw, so I'll, I'll put a, a tap through there first to, to clean it up. So I have the gear and collar. Uh, lined up but can't force the shaft in uh, by hand so I'll just use a hammer and hit on the end of the shaft um, and I made sure I have kind of the flat spot lined up with the uh, the hole of the gear. So I have everything lined up ready to go the shaft in and seated um, I'll use the screwdriver again to put the set screw in because of the way I built this without a cross member in this area there's a ton of access which is really nice on other boats if uh, more on the two shaft boats where these will kind of be on the outboards it can be uh, tough to to get those set screws in uh, the screwdriver helps because it it does a really good job of holding the set screw where if you use uh, an allen key that isn't that great the uh, when you go to put it in like this the set screw will fall off and it's uh, it's very very frustrating now it's time to get the uh, main drive motor set up. So you can see there, um, 1100 kV. It's probably high for this application, but it's one of the smaller kV ratings I was able to have, and I had it in on hand. The gear I'll use is, um, I think it's 14 tooth, 32 pitch. So I already made the flat spot, but what I have to do is kind of put it here and then see where the gear 
is gonna needs to sit on the shaft um, and then grind the flat spot so it'll actually be the uh, the the end closer to the motor bearing. Um, so I'll put the uh, put the gear on and then it attaches. You can see the uh, the bolt holes there. Um, so I'll, I'll get those in kind of loose and then I'll show how I set the uh, gear height. So I have the uh, drive motor just about set. So I will point out one thing spacing wise I didn't really do a great job on. Um, so you can see to get a get an allen key. To get an allen key in there um, you know relative to where the solenoids are. Uh, not a huge amount of spacing, fortunately I have a kind of cut down one that uh, fits in there. So to set the uh, spacing between the gears, I'll I use paper. Um, so I have this folded up so it's uh, three levels thick. And I'll just I'll put it through the gears and I'll kind of push them together. And then I will torque the motor down, rotate the gears to pull the paper out, and uh, see how the, uh, the spacing is. So I have the uh, the paper in and the motor torque down so I could just uh, you know, rotate the motor and get the paper out and then rotate this back and forth so you can sort of see that there's there's a little bit of backlash there between the two gears So I think that that spacing is uh, it's pretty good. They're not grinding together. So what I'll do is I'll take some of that same grease that I use for the uh, stuffing tubes. I'll put it on the gears, and then uh, put the little uh, gear cover on so the grease doesn't go everywhere, and uh, spin it up and make sure it's uh, it's all good. I have the wiring harness done and everything hooked up and powered on. It's good to just do a uh, bench functional test. Make sure all the systems work, so I'll check the throttle. It's kind of loud, but it's fine. So both the inboard and outboard props are moving appropriately. Clicking is the solenoids and the uh, the test switches for the triples. So this all seems good.